Andrew, what do you consider natty? PPC-157 and TB-500 combined dose. Where do you get bacteriostatic water? Best peptide for women. Is grub natural? This video is going to be on peptides. I watch people talk about stuff like this and they're not really to the point. And with that being said, CA Peptide sent me some MOTC, eight milligrams of it. And I'm not gonna really get into the nitty gritty right here, but from this point on forward, I'm just going to play a straight shot of me reconstituting this stuff and then shooting it into this part of my stomach, right? Over here. I've talked about this before. You're supposed to shoot it a little bit over from your belly button, but you're also supposed to shoot it into fat. It's supposed to be a subcutaneous shot into the fat of your stomach. And I don't really have any fat in my stomach. See how thin it is right there? But what I do have are these little love handles. So I've been shooting my peptides into my fat over here, my love handle. And you're gonna see that. And if you're confused about that, that's why it's going over there and not right next to my belly button. So I'm just gonna get to it. And then I'm gonna let other Andrew talk to you about some stuff to keep you entertained and maybe even learn a thing or two along the way. So while he's doing that, I figured that this would be a good chance for me to answer a whole lot of the questions that I get in relation to peptides and performance enhancing drugs. And I'd all do it in open format so that everybody can benefit from these questions. This one talks about Alexis. She's healing twice as fast as other people. Was wondering if the November 1st ban on BPC-157 by the FDA is going to influence what's happening over at CA Peptides. It has not seemed to. And actually, I think CA Peptides has gotten their supplier from a different source so they can continue production, getting them to the people who want them. And I think it may have altered the pricing a little bit. I'm talking from things that I vaguely remember, so I can't say that for fact, but I do know that people are getting their orders when they order them off of the website. Code Hiller at checkout. And yeah, it's crazy. Alexis is healing twice as fast. Has healed twice as fast. Andrew, is there a peptide that reduces sleep need like TRT. TRT seems to be like a good option, but I don't want to commit to it for life. Thanks for any input. So here are the peptides that I have used. BPC-157, BPC-TB500 mix, CJC-1295, curcumin, GHKCU, epimorelin, melanotan-2, MT2 on the website, thymosin alpha, and that's it. On top of, I guess, the MOTC, which I just used. By the way, that thing that you're seeing me do in the video right there, that's supposed to be very similar from what I can understand to the GW501516. It's supposed to have some sort of an effect on the mitochondria as an exercise enhancer. And then the trickle-down effect is supposed to be some additional level of fat loss. But the way that I can understand it, it's going to give you some sort of an increased bump. The same way that you heal a little bit quicker when you are using BPC TB500 in the recovery process, it's going to give you a slight bump in the amount of time that you increase your fitness levels. That one isn't on the CA peptides website yet, but it's supposed to be pretty soon. And the reason that I just listed off all of those peptides is because the ones that I've seen that can probably have the biggest impact on your sleep are the ones that are most similar to the growth hormone sort of benefits. They increase your growth hormone levels. So I'm thinking the CJC is in the epimorelins, the sermorelins as well. And the biggest thing that I can recollect from having taken those is that you have more dreams. Dreams usually mean that you're in a deeper state of sleep and I don't ever dream when I'm I'm not using those sort of peptides. I've never had dreams. I'm not a dreamer. And it's actually probably the most fun part of taking those peptides. It lets you know that they're also working. It's like, hey, I don't dream and then I do dream. There must be something different. And the thing that's typically different is I'm using one of those three peptides. So probably your answer to that, who I don't know who's asking this question, are those three that have the similar growth hormone sort of impact on you. Here's a question asking if PEDs affect my relationship and if there are pros or cons. The cons are that I want to have sex all the time. Time. For some of you, that might be pros. And then the having sex part is also a pro. And let's just say that Alexis is a pretty good sport about that. God bless her soul. All right, a quick break from other Andrew. So I've talked probably at some point where I got the bacteriostatic water from, talked about how you need to always be sterilizing and re-sterilizing stuff. I believe I brought up the website where I kind of pick up all of these needles. These are, I think, an inch and a half. And then the formula and how you put water into and how much to use in relation to how much of the shot that you want to give, I all made in another video. It's got Arnold Schwarzenegger on the cover. I think it's called Peptides for Dummies. I'll link that thing in here. And if I haven't said it yet, you can get all of this stuff from capeptides.com. I believe that was actually a question asked on that other video 
where can I get stuff that isn't bunk, meaning fake. And when it comes to whether or not these things are actually working for you, I can tell you for sure that Alexis, who had this freaking crazy hip surgery, was supposed to have like a six to eight month recovery period. And I know that she's in incredible shape and most people who get that sort of hip surgery are not in that sort of shape. But she was using BPC-157 along with the TB500 as she was recovering through that first couple of months. And the doctors on the checkup calls that they have at like the two and the three and the four month point, they're like, wow, you're way ahead of the curve. And that's all it's supposed to do. It's supposed to give you an upper hand to help you recover a little bit quicker. And I don't know where I am in relation to the other things that I'll be saying, but I do know that I want to talk about the Greg Doucette video where he had a peptide tearing list. And so what I have for you today is a tier list. And on that peptide tiering list, I know at the top of it, he's got BPC-157 and TB-500. BPC-157, it's joining up with my cookbook. They're best friends now. The reason BPC is in there is because I get injured a lot of the times and I'm old and I'm very active and I've put a lot of abuse on my body. I was a power lifter. It can benefit anyone that's looking to prevent injuries, to feel better, and to get back to the gym and train harder than last time. And of course, how can you have BPC-157 in there without having TB500, their best friends. It's literally the Wolverine stack. Those are both on CA Peptide's website. If you use code Hiller at checkout, they'll either send you either free bacteriostatic water or it's free shipping. There's usually one of the two going on. So use code Hiller, H-I-L-L-E-R at checkout. But there's a Ben Greenfield article out there that's really good on BPC-157 in particular. And it's the Wolverine thing. It's supposed to help you recover quicker. I've seen it happen to Alexis. Whenever I go to events and I've spoken about this on end, I have so many people coming on up to me and they're like, hey, should I use it or I have have used it from the people who say that they have used it, they can't tell me enough good things about it. So I basically want to put those people up to one another and say, hey, you should use it because this person said that they did use it and they just wish they would have done it sooner. And the most frequent question that I get about this is, hey, I've had a bummed out knee for three years. Should I use BPC-157? And my answer is always the sooner that you can use something after the incident or the surgery or whatever, the more impactful it's going to be. Back to other Andrew. How can I order BPC-157 and what is the process like? Obviously, CA Peptide sells it. Go to the website, put it in your cart like any other website. The thing that they aren't going to send you are the bacteriostatic water and the needles, unless they're still sending that stuff with the code Hiller at checkout, but I think that that generally will get you free shipping. You're also going to need the swabs, which you can get on Amazon. They're really cheap. It's like 10 bucks for the swabs, 10 bucks for the needles, 10 bucks for the water, and you can get that at AtlanticMedicalSupplies.com, I believe it is. Yeah, there are a couple of loops that you gotta go through. You gotta get the stuff from CI Peptides, you gotta get the stuff from Atlantic Medical Supplies, you gotta get the stuff from Amazon, throw them all together, use my other video on how to reconstitute the peptides because I believe I plugged the calculator website in how to do all of that. After it's all said and done, you should be pretty good to go using that process. What percentage of games athletes are taking peptides? Looked into this a little bit. And my favorite thing, just as like the third grader looking at stuff, it's like, hey dad, why aren't there any CrossFit games athletes who have ever tested positive for peptides? And it's like, well son, let's go look at the list of people who have tested positive and then there's none. And it's really hard to answer that question. Similar to like, why don't many of the men test positive for testosterone. And the answer there, correlation between the two of those, are peptides are naturally occurring in the body. And it's hard for drug testers to kind of differentiate those two things. That's part one. And it's actually probably a lesser proponent of the answer, where the largest answer to the question is that it is a water-based thing. I mean, you just saw me reconstitute this stuff with water. Water is in and out of the body. There's also a reason why you have to shoot the peptides daily, because the half-life of the peptides is pretty short. So on top of the fact that they are naturally reoccurring in the body, and if they were looking for an elevated amount of them. The only way they're going to catch the fact that they are elevated is if they test you within a couple of hours of you injecting yourself. And you'd have to be a freaking idiot to go into an event where the athletes know that they're getting tested, having just injected a peptide, thinking that you're going to get away scot-free. Usually, you should be good to go within a week or two when it comes to a peptide, which is why you're not going to see any athletes testing positive. That and generally the fear of needles over something like a GW501516, which has an extremely long half-life, stays in your system for quite a long time. And the barrier of taking it is just throw it down your freaking mouth like all the food you do anyway. People don't want to do the needles and if they do they're probably smart enough to know when to stop taking them. And they're hard to find. And they got a short half-life and that's your answer. I guess, I guess that's not really your answer but the question was what percentage of them are taking? For all I know it's 100%. That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. I'd probably really want to say 10 to 15%.
Honest answer. BPC-157 and TB-500 combined dose. Dosing is interesting. Usually I don't wanna go any more than a thousand micrograms. So with this one, I believe they sell them in tens or fives or maybe 15s on the website. And a thousand micrograms is just a milligram when you reconstitute all of it, but it would be 500 of each at this point. And if I were just doing PPC-157, I would go no more than 800 milligrams, micrograms, 800 micrograms. And usually you wanna titrate that thing up too. So you go something like 400, 600, 800, and make sure that you're tolerating it well. And it's not that it really anybody doesn't tolerate it that well, but it's always better to start low and make sure that you're good to go before you bring the stuff up. Do you take HCG or HMG in your TRT protocol? No, I don't because I don't want to have kids. And if not, are there any shrinkages? Yeah, those things are meant to keep you fertile and keep your balls larger. I have no need or want to keep my balls larger. I have no need or want to keep myself fertile because I don't want to have kids. I've never wanted kids. And if that changed, then I can introduce something like an HCG. I don't really understand why people would put more of external drugs under your body for no reason, just to keep their balls larger. You probably just shouldn't have started taking testosterone in the first place. If you want kids, don't take testosterone. You can always have a kid and take it later. And also you can still have kids while on testosterone. And if you just want bigger balls, then there's probably something else wrong with you at that point. Big balls is this male bravado weird thing. I have to have big balls. It's like, well, then you're just weird. BPC-157 and TB-500 together or take them individually recommended dosaging schedule. Take them together. If if you can afford it. I know it's a little bit more expensive on the website, but what's gonna end up happening is you're gonna take some BPC-157, you're gonna take some TB-500, and then you're gonna take them both together anyway. The dosing schedule, as I said a little bit earlier when it comes to athletes testing positive and the half-life of it, you wanna take it basically every single day. You should be getting at least 20 injections per bottle. Is grub natural? That's Jason Grub. By the way, I'm getting all these questions from an Ask Me Anything from way long ago. I think it was in August I put this up. And there are a handful of questions about PEDs, about peptides, so we're just going through those right now. And this is something I hear it all the time. Everybody wants to know if Jason Grubb is natural. And he put out a video just the other day where he says that he is natural. I want to make it perfectly clear that I have absolutely never used performance enhancing drugs ever in my entire life. And for those of you that really enjoy accusing me of using in the comments section on various YouTube posts, I'm talking to you and I'm telling the rest of the world. This has never happened. It's never even been a temptation in my life. But beyond that, why this matters to me is that I want us all to be on an absolute level playing field. The thing that sucks for people like Jason Grubb is that he very well could be telling the truth. The Liver King said on multiple accounts to way more people that he was natural. Freaking Jonathan Adele claims that he's natural. Freaking every athlete that tests positive in the CrossFit games, including recently Sean Ramirez, says that there was something in their supplements. It wasn't me. Of course I'm natural. But even if you had something in your supplements, the reason that they reduce your band is because you were not natural while you were competing. It doesn't matter how small of a trace of amount they found in your urine during that drug test. You are not natural when you were taking that drug test because you had stuff in you. That's the point. Is Jason Grubb natural? I think he's natural. How do I know? Well, look at his hair. He's got phenomenal hair. It looks like he didn't do any sort of exercising before the age of 40. And I'm gonna give this dude the benefit of the doubt. And I'm gonna probably make some enemies at that point as well. Some people are like, no, Andrew, how could you possibly think that you also thought Bridges was natural? It's like, yeah, I think those guys are natural. Is there any PEDs you would like to try? Something new for you? So, I mean, I mentioned all of the peptides that I've taken. I've taken testosterone at 200 milligrams a week from CA Peptide's sister company, CA Hormones. And now I've downed that dose from 200 to 100. And the reason I did that is because I just kind of felt like a block walking around. I put on a bunch of weight. I weighed about 185, 190 for the majority of my life and all of my competitive CrossFit life. And then I went all the way up to 210, 215. And that's what happened at 200 milligrams of test a week. I got my blood work done through the company and it showed that my freaking testosterone was off the charts. It was in like the 2000s. It's like, okay, dude, we're going down. New blood work shows that I'm right within the reference range where I was at like 800. And before that, I think I was also at like 1300, which is all also over and it was like high over, high normal. Now I'm in the 800s and my body weight is just above what it used to be for the longest time. So I'm currently as of this morning, 193, I was 185 to 190. And your question is, are there PEDs that I would like to try? And I just tried Matsi, which is like the cool new version of GW501516, the peptide version that in theory, they would never be able to test for or freaking finding you in a CrossFit sanctioned event. But I don't know. I kind of like testosterone and I don't like the idea of liking more things. I 
think that's the addiction part, right? Like I really like what testosterone does for my ability to put on a little bit of muscle mass, not necessarily need to sleep as much while I probably should and everyone should be sleeping more. I maintain more fitness than I figure I would have had I had not been taking it and doing all of this work that I do on the computer at this point in time. But I don't really think that I want more and that might always change, who knows. Where do you get bacteriostatic water? I believe I answered that already. It was from the Atlantic Medical Supply website. Still on TRT, how are that? Pros and cons. I just talked about that too. I mentioned the pros and I consider the cons to be probably some hair loss. Like my dad has this wicked thin hair and when I was at that higher dose, I noticed that I probably shed every morning. The sink would have a couple of hairs in it. And it's also the reason I think Jason Grubb is freaking natural, which is why I am the lab rat. What do you consider natty? Never any gear, how long off gear? Passing P test or other? Passing a P test does not mean you're natural. So we're gonna just chuck that one out. Never on any gear or how long off of gear. I'm going to say never using anything is what you will need to be considered natural. There's this figure of speech in the bodybuilding community about a natty card. It's like the second that you use anything that isn't basically a caffeine, which is hardcore, creatine, which is hardcore, but it's still a natural thing that you can use. If you use a peptide, you're not natural. If you use any sort of anabolic, you're not natural. If you use growth hormone, you're not natural. And I don't think that you can ever get that back, that natty card. It's like you give it away and you can't have it back. You can lose all of the progress that you picked up while you were doing that and say, it's okay, I'm natural now. My testosterone levels are in the dirt even. It's like, yeah, but you can't really get back what you had. So if you wanna be considered natural, don't take crap. What other supplements should I take with my TRT? All the normal ones. And I basically just point to water. Drink more water. Have a multivitamin. From there, make sure you're hitting your protein. If you need a protein supplement to do that, do that as well. You should still be taking creatine, fish oil. <sighs> And I think caffeine might be the best supplement on planet Earth. But the best way to know what you need is to get your blood work done. So it's not really like you need a supplement to maybe use or enhance or counter anything that's happening when you're on the testosterone. What you actually got to do is go get your blood work done and probably do so every three or four months. Are you still taking steroids? Yes, answered that. Best peptide for women for muscle growth. It's gonna be the same one that I recommended for the sleep because there aren't any outright peptides with the exception of this phyostatin one, FST344. It's a myostatin inhibitor. Personally, that one kind of trips me out a little bit. I've never used it, but if you want a peptide for muscle growth, that would probably be the one to take because it's gonna turn off your inhibitors to say, all right, you're big enough, no more muscle, and just let you get as big as possible. The ones that I like are the Eat Morellin, the CJC1295, and the Sermorellin. And the reason I like those ones because if you boost your growth hormone, you're gonna put on a pretty good amount of muscle mass, and as a woman, you're probably also gonna get nicer skin, better hair, better nails, all that stuff, and I know that that's something that women hold to a higher regard. Some men, too. I said it once, I've said it twice, and now I'll say it three times. Go to capeptides.com, use code HILLERICH, check out, you'll probably just get free shipping for that, which will save you 20, 30 bucks. Use that 20 or 30 bucks to go to Atlantic Medical Supplies where you can pick up your water and your needles and your uh, pads or whatever to wipe down the top of them. Use my other video with Arnold Schwarzenegger on the front called Peptides for Dummies. If you need to figure out how to reconstitute whatever it is that you pick up, it's milligrams into the water and there's this whole conversion, but there's a calculator in that video that'll tell you how to do that. Maybe it's in the description in the bio. If you got more questions on this stuff, throw them into the comment section on this video and we'll see you when I come around to making another one of these. Until then, Andrew Hiller out.